Hey guys, this episode we're gonna revise even further our liking posts with Hotwire using turbo frames. So let's take a look at our example. We'll talk about how it works and then we'll refactor into turbo frames. So what's really awesome about this functionality is we have a like button. This makes a regular browser request to the server using turbo. Um, the server side then decides, okay, you wanna to toggle your like, we either unlike or like it. And then we render a turbo stream to go find this ID on the page and replace it with this partial. And that ID is included in the partial, so it's just updating itself. And this is exactly what we did back in 2014 with our jQuery and Rails UJS uh, functionality where we would basically set up a link, uh, make an Ajax request to the server, it would render some JavaScript that we would execute to find that ID and then replace the HTML. So we've just eliminated all that custom JavaScript and jQuery and used Hotwire for it, so we have no custom JavaScript. But what we've done here is basically set this up as you know, a uh, specific thing that we have to go and replace on the page. So the controller needs to know exactly what to do with that and um, where to go find the ID, how it's generated, which partial to render, um, and all of that stuff. And it ends up in this fairly big block. Now, turbo frames are kind of like iframes in your browser, but turbo frames will actually say, hey, if I'm uh, clicking a link or a button, inside of a turbo frame, I'll let Rails know. And then when the Rails response comes back, the JavaScript says, oh, I see that inside that HTML, we have the same matching turbo frame. Let me grab that snippet and then replace that portion on the page with the new version. So rather than having to tell Rails how to do that, we can just use the turbo frame feature instead. So this is really awesome. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say turbo frame tag and we can do the same thing where we say record and likes, um, or you could do it vice versa. One thing that will change a little bit if you do this, let me show you real fast. Let's refresh our page with the new HTML. You'll see that I left the tag div. Um, DOM ID is going to put the prefix at the beginning, but with the turbo frame, it's actually gonna put it at the end, at least right now. I think maybe they're gonna use DOM ID for everything so they will be consistent. Um, but right now, they're a little bit different. I remember seeing an issue about this on, on the GitHub. Um, but what's cool about that is as long as we're using the turbo frame tag when we first render on the page, and then our response includes the exact same turbo frame tag, then Rails will do all of this stuff for us. So what's cool is we can go get rid of this, we can say render uh, and just drop all of these things and just say, hey, why don't you render that partial? And the partial has a turbo frame tag in it. So when we click the button in the original turbo frame, it goes to the server, renders the new version of the partial and it finds that turbo frame tag in the new version and then replaces the content on the page with the new version. So now we can click like and unlike, nothing has changed at all, but if we look at our network tab, our like uh, returns a turbo frame instead of a turbo stream, and then turbo frames just know, oh, we want to replace that on the page. So if you're doing anything on your Rails applications where you want something to update in real time, then turbo frames are your friend. They are going to take care of a lot of this stuff for you. You don't have to do the fine tuned uh, examples like you do with turbo streams. So in these cases, when you're doing replaces or updates, in general, you want to just use a turbo frame first before you reach for turbo streams. If you need to do more complex stuff, turbo streams allows you to do pretty much infinitely anything that you could ever want because uh, you can extend them and write custom things. But turbo frames work like an iframe in the browser. So if you are using that on the original page and in your Ajax uh, or your HTTP requests inside of there, uh, you know, when you click the like button here, that response, as long as it's got the same turbo frame in it, you're good to go. So you can either render the entire page or even just a portion of the page um, on those responses. You don't need any layouts. It's exactly the same thing as we were doing with our turbo stream replace. But now our code here is just way simpler. We have even less stuff that we have to do for that. So turbo frames are an excellent option 
um, for this. So that's what I wanted to point out here because they work very, very well uh, for this situation. So while this works really well, there is one issue with it currently that hopefully it will be fixed in the near future. But when you click like and you are not logged in, the server side is going to do that redirect to uh, the sign-in page. And that sign-in page is going to return HTML, but it is not going to have a turbo frame in it. So when we refresh our page here, let me clear out our logs. If we click like, it's going to make a request to the like path using a post request. That's going to return a 302 saying, hey, you need to sign in. And that sign in uh, HTML is not gonna have the turbo frame and then the turbo frame will be updated with content missing. So in order to fix this, what we can do is we can just add an if statement around our action here and say if user signed in, then we will have that button else. Um, we can have a you know button to or a link to for uh, like, whatever we would want. If we wanna make this look exactly the same, we'd use some CSS, um, but we would say, you know, new user session path. And then we're probably always gonna have the text of like here uh, as well, because this is going to be a user who's uh, not signed in. So we'll say like, because we can't tell if you've liked it, if you're not signed in. Um, so we could do something like this. We would probably use some CSS to style both of those as matching buttons. But now when we click this, uh, we can actually tell it to use the target of top so that this also can break out of the turbo frame um, when it is inside of there. So right now it's doing the exact same thing. You're going to the sign in page and it's like, hey, there's no matching turbo frame there. What are you doing? So the way we can override that is we can add a data attribute telling it to use the parent or the, the top of the page. Um, so this is basically saying follow link, following that link will replace the whole page, not this frame. So it will break out of the frame that way. You can also uh, have form submits where it will replace the navigation frame as well. Um, so here with this, we can say data turbo frame top. And now if we try this, like is going to take us to log in and then we can go back to that page and actually like it when we're signed in. So feel free to reference the TurboFrame documentation on the reference section of the docs. Now I also wanna mention that there's discussion about how to best handle the server side breaking out of TurboFrames as well. It has not been finished, but hopefully will be soon. And that will alleviate any of this if statements that you have here. Um, so we can still have the button go to the um, server side and we can get back to having no conditional here. Um, but this is fine too. So this can link directly to where you need to go rather than having to make a post request and then get redirected. Uh, you can just have the user go directly to where they need to go for now. Um, so turbo frames really uh, are an excellent option. They're effectively a shortcut for the replace turbo streams. And it also walks across pages too. So if your server is uh, basically editing a record and then redirecting you to the show page, your current page in the browser can follow that to edit. It will grab and replace the page on the form with the edit version. And when you save it, it can redirect to show and it will also grab and update that section of the show page. So you really get a lot of nice built-in functionality uh, with the turbo frames out of the box. Um, you don't have to worry about operations on the page and the IDs and all of that stuff. It's basically taken care of for you with those turbo frames. So uh, the advice that I got from Sean Doyle, who is a big contributor to Hotwire and Turbo especially, is to reach for turbo frames first before you dig into using turbo streams. Now, of course, there's some things you can only do with turbo streams, so that is, um, just fine to jump right in if in some of those cases. But first, you should ch take a look and see if you can solve that problem with a turbo frame because it will be a lot simpler to work with, uh, which I thought was awesome. Um, and so this stuff works across you know regular pages with or without actually having your JavaScript enabled, which is another benefit uh, too. So if somebody had turned that off, you're still gonna just navigate around like normal um, and your turbo streams would not be the same way because they require JavaScript to actually run. 
So that is it for this episode, uh, but that digs in a little bit to the differences between using turbo streams and turbo frames and why you should use one or the other. Um, but this was a good example where we could refactor the little operation that it seemed, you know, that's the way we would do it. That's what we're trying to accomplish. We can do the exact same thing with the turbo frame as well. And it's even less code than, uh, than the other version and pretty much accomplishes the exact same thing. And especially once uh, this PR or a similar one gets merged, we'll be able to control those turbo frame things from the server side as well. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.